then the heliocentric would change would change again. There's a heliocentric and the constellations are it's lying the other way, the seal signs are going the other way. So it's still it's just the other side of the looking glass, depending on which hemisphere they're coming from. But most of the people who are making the astrology programs, they know traditional astrology and they're applying it. They aren't really expanding the parameters and realizing that these charts could be made that Southern Hemisphere. I mean, why wouldn't someone reverse that in the Southern Hemisphere in a program just as an option, even if they don't believe in it? A lot of people do. It makes sense. So, like, we're caught by the limitations of what's been accepted already. And a lot of the traditional astrology, the, the the Vedic and a lot of the um, Hellenistic astrology, they're based on old systems that were mathematically used and carried forward. And they have a certain validity up to a point within, within logical deduction. But they're not a replacement for the insights we're getting on these new levels with this new information with computers, with technology. Today. We're getting such lucid, clear things that you can see directly. They're not a substitute for the new things that are going on. It's still, you're still going back in time to understand a phase that happened there, which is useful in terms of literature. And you can apply it today, you see how people used to, but it still falls short of what you can do today. So there's my critique against Hellenistic, but I didn't mean to be, I, I'm fascinated by it. I've gone to workshops and seminars. It's to understand European evolution or Western evolution of astrology. Yeah, it's very useful. It's more the evolution of horoscopy, of 12 sign things rather than of astrology. But because astrology goes way before that, people have been watching planets and watching how they affect the affairs on the earth as long as there's been people. This is this is the heliocentric charts for the, again, the constellation starts with the, the, the colored rays going to each planet by, again, in the reverse signs. And then you have the right ascension charts too. It comes out like this. I think, what did we do? What did I do last? Oh yeah, with the colors, the multiple colors. Yeah, so these are the equatorial ones. So this is um, what I call, I don't, for want of a better, better word, I don't have to describe these, I call them the horoscopes of the 21st century, because they're, they're what's going to be used and what's coming ahead. They're not, it's not the same as what's already been. It's a tremendous blossoming of perspective, insights, and associations. And by adding color, and there's a whole other layer where you can play these musically and have this as musical assessments as well. It's it, it tunes into the whole universe. Color and sound can heal almost anything, but it puts a challenge as the traditional zodiac. No, I'm just used to doing this. I don't want to learn all these extra things. I'm just going to keep track of the, the twelve houses and put planets in there and read it. That's valid up to a point, and a lot of people do good work with that. Funny thing with astrology, you can know a little piece of it, know a little bit about each sign of the zodiac, and you can talk to people and you're still passing on good information to someone, they're getting information that's useful. You can get some information that's wrong as well, but you still have, like you can speak English with, with 50 words and get by. But boy, you can get by a lot better if you know a thousand words. And really you can start to embellish if you, if you start getting a few thousand words. Just different degrees of Literacy. These charts take astrology to another level of literacy, another level of literacy. But because they're time consuming to get, I've been obsessed by them for years. You know, um, I can almost say centuries has been in the two centuries, but it's not the whole, I'm not that old, close. But um, if we can get these into a program and make them available, this gets accessible easily. This becomes an easy standard to assess and, and they can be organized clearly to see these distinctions. You can put the ecliptic progressions beside the right ascension collections and see how the timings different and come together. It just expands the use of astrology incredibly. So, okay, that's the end of this class. Um, these last four classes have really been meant to 
pop you out of the bubble when we first started with astrology. We just here's the ocean of what astrology means, what the houses, the planets, the signs. Oh wow, it's so much. Then we had to go through building the boat of interpretation, knowing all the worksheets to know how each planet, each sign, each factor meant something, and that it was so. And then we put it together in the natal chart. We finally have a, a boat to travel across the ocean of meaning, and we can navigate through. Then we saw the timings, which was the guiding systems to look in through time in our life with the trends. So we have a natal chart and transits, we have a good foundation in astrology. Suddenly we just, that was all fixed and, and solid and knowable and you can easily prove it and it's really the solid bond foundation of astrology, but you can get too narrow-minded if that's all you're doing and you can miss things if that's all you're doing. So things throw up to us. So these last classes have been dying to expand your ideas, expand your concepts to go beyond what you know how to gather. And we're still going to do some more, a lot more expansion on signs and houses and everything. And then we'll put it together for how this is useful when we get to progressions. It's necessary preparation work to get to the next level. Okay, thank you. Uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we're just straight on time. That's good. Okay, thank you. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye.